Uh, I'm a pediatrician and a public health practitioner, and uh, I'm trying also to try to understand what does it mean health with this broader perspective. And I just want to catch up some of the comments that were uh, said during these two days. The first is that we are, we all are community. And this is something that is, sometimes it's important to highlight within the health services because health practitioners, they talk about community as something that is there. They don't feel as part of the community. Uh, the other uh, issue that has been mentioned is that the need of having a lar large picture. So what do we mean with this? Uh, is, is an issue of size? is an issue of uh, how large is the box, a uh, professional box and professional thinking on where do we would do move. It has to do with the size or has to do with the, how inclusive we are in terms of bringing other approaches, methodologies, uh, models, and uh, theoretical approaches. And the other one is uh, the, the issue of how to make tangible uh, this concept of uh, of uh, diversity, so, so I will try to, to, to do my best based on my experience. So uh, what I will expect from you is just to understand this as a port of entrance and as, as a point of uh, starting to debate on how we do understand diversity from the health settings or healthcare point of view, considering that the healthcare system is part of the determinants of health. Although we, we uh, there is a growing understanding that we physicians contribute just in a short part to the whole picture, I, I think that we, we have a lot to do in terms of uh, being involved with a more comprehensive approach, approach to health. Uh, and another thing that I, I was thinking, listening to you, is that uh, we, we understand the duration of the gestational period for the human being. But I have another question for you is uh, this, what about the duration of the gestation period for the uh, democracy? When I'm saying this, when I'm saying this is because many of the countries that we are participating in this fabulous conference, we come from different histories of democracies. But for the case of Latin American countries, uh, we, our democracies, we are, were interrupted by dictatorships. So we are starting to learn of what does it mean to live in a, in a democracy? And this question, I have no answer for this. Uh, it has serious implication in terms of how to build health in different places of the community and how to understand uh, health as a common good. So these are the main ideas that I prepared for this uh, presentation. Recognize diverse diversities as a tangible aspect inherent to have the quality of life, to identify those aspects that occur in health services as a consequence of the lack of recognition of diversities. Third, to provide arguments about the importance of recognizing diversities in health settings. And finally, to share one experience that we developed in public health service in Argentina named, I hear you, Te Escucho. So the, this is not a, a, an issue of hearing capacity from the sensorial point of view is just to provide a more widened view. I mean, to enlarge the picture of what does it mean to hear or to listen in the health settings, considering that we have restricted social hearing capacities in, this, in the sector. And just as a scheme, the idea is to move from the facts, the arguments, and then what we can do. So let's start with the facts. You all know that population difference exists and those can be a result of social injustice. And as an expression, we have the inequities, disparities, social gaps, gradients, social exclusion, marginalization, and you can continue with this list as a way to express how us, humankind, we create based on the different political, economical, neoliberal mo uh, models creating this kind of society where the fundamentalism of market, market establishes the rules. But there are other differences that are the result uh, or the consequence of social di diversity that are related with gender diversity, with people with disabilities, with race, ethnicity, culture, sexual orientation, among others. But 
to make this picture more complex, we understand that there are many intersectionalities resulting when we combine these sources of difference. So let's move. Let's, uh, you are all invited to come here now to Argentina. So let's travel as a, in, the, in our fantasy. And imagine that you are here in Argentina and something that we do when we go to uh, uh, develop our, our work is to work with her settings, with her teams, and just some kind of vignettes to characterize our present situation. In recent years, healthcare has become more complex. So this is another source of complexity. Healthcare spaces often become areas of tension between the unsatisfied demands of the users, clients, beneficiaries, and the response capacity of the health providers. The existence of these tensions are sometimes expressions of violation of different rights. And again, talking about the question of how long does it take to build a democracy, uh, we learn rights after by the, their violation, systematic violation. So I think that we, we should, and we are in a moment in our history that we should learn uh, human rights from the promotion of rights and not because they are violated. But still there's violation of vulneration of the rights to information, to non-discrimination, to the best interests of the people, to privacy, to survival, development, culture, identity, among others. So the lack of consideration of the rights perspective and the recognition of diversities in the provision of services, assuming that all the people are equal, that everything is homogeneous, has negative impact on the quality of care and also on the well-being of, of the beneficiaries. And why not of the workers, the health workers in each of the institutions? So I'm going to share with you some of the postcards as, as, as the vignettes of what we discover when we do a sort of semiologic analysis uh, of the institutions. First, we can find that there are barriers to communication in different ways because people cannot reach uh, the providers face to face or, or because there are restricted times for visiting their relatives. Health settings are also a source of violence between providers and the, uh, and the people who go to get for, 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 care, for assistance or for care. And there is also, also a culture of impotence in terms of watching how do people react violent after, for example, getting the information of the death of the of some relative and these things that happen happen in terms of the kind of reaction gives a sense of how is the environment in terms of creating confidence approach uh, communication uh, transparency between health providers and the clients there is also a culture of prohibition and authoritarianism that is also again a part of the kind of culture that affects our society as a whole but also expresses in in health settings i won't say that this is restricted to healthcare. i think that it affects uh, this kind of behaviors in different uh, levels of settings in our society there is also a culture of disinformation in terms of assuming that the kind of information that the, we provide to the people will be understandable and moreover it will make a change in terms of modifying the behaviors and there's no evidence that this is this happens i'm not making judge of value of the intention of the people who do this what i'm saying is that there is not self-criticism in terms of the kind of uh, uh, behaviors that or conducts that we develop in a different setting and as another example, uh, there is a culture of colonialist faith in secular health settings. This is as, as an example that we, we try to move from high complexity hospitals, from high religiosity hospitals, in terms of imposing uh, some kind of belief or religions in institutions that belong to the state 
and they were supposed to be inclusive to different religions or faiths, but not oriented to promote or uh, to use a term that has been mentioned today, to use a sort of social prescription in terms of uh, religion. Imagine that you are going to the operation room and you are going to, and you watch a via crucis. I mean, just from the mental health point of view, being exposed to these kind of images, how will affect this or not your mental health? But there are also other kind of uh, issues that happen in health settings that are abstract, that are invisible, but they are there. And we call them fences towards healthcare that they express internal biases, omissions, discrimination, homophobic behaviors, prejudice, racism, beliefs, taboos, xenophobia, stereotyping, adult-centrism, transphobia, and what we call the epistemology of ignorance. How to build information that distorts or disrupts reality, or how to keep information for those who have the power to be informed and to not to share or not to, demo, uh, to make democratic the access to uh, information. So these barriers sometimes are more stronger than those that are the barriers that are visible. Let's move to the arguments. As you know, there are different approaches to health or different lenses. These are, this is just a restricted list. What we know is that each of these approaches respond to a paradigm in evolution. And all these uh, approaches or lenses are not mutually exclusive. The problem what comes when we try to explain something as complex as health using just one view. For the case of the biomedical example, when we do this in extreme, what we are doing is medicalizing health or pathological pathologization of health. I'm sorry if I invent no words, but the problem of having a restricted view or a restricted picture is that we, we lose the whole picture or the bigger picture that has been set today. So the challenge that we offer when we work with health teams is to open their eyes and to see beyond the box and to see that there are many things that happen beyond the traditional paradigm of the biomedical model. In terms of the arguments, we know that discriminatory practices, whatever the reason, affect health and well-being of people. Anybody who is discriminated for any reason will affect his or her health. The recognition and appreciation of diversities promotes, promotes approaches sensitive to existing differences. And the rights-based approach to health recognizes the importance of considering all people as equal, as subjects of rights, valuing differences as an expression of diversity. More arguments. Promoting a culture of rights generates a climate of empathy within health settings. And it is also necessary to translate the medical evidence, that is something that we also do, as a, an argumentative basis to overcome or to convince uh, our colleagues because there are uh, existing resistance, resistances in terms of make things happen. So we have to generate medical evidence or a medical discourse on why it's important to bring rights into the health settings. So when we speak of community, we must become aware that health workers, as I mentioned in the introduction, are part of that community. And as such, they require internalizing the meaning and implication of otherness. And in terms of arguments, we also generate evidence based on our studies. This is a large study that we have done on 65,000 women in terms of the, and trying to understand the life course history of pregnancy within women in our country. So one of the things that we discovered in, our, in this, one of these studies is that almost 50% of the women become pregnant as a result of an unwanted, unplanned uh, decision. And in some cases, when they are less than 15, there was a consequence of a, a sexual violation. So I think that this is also important to understand why to bring sexual reproductive rights 
is also an important tool and reach to approach to understand diversity. Not all the pregnancies are equal. Not all the pregnancies uh, are the result of the desire or a dream situation. There is a diversity of situations that should, they need to be understand and explained and also approach. So let's move to the responses. What do we do with this situation? So our project, I hear you, the escucho, what we do is to bring, to bring uh, the rice perspective into the health settings. And for this reason, for this purpose, what, what we have done is to translate and adapt to the Latin American context, some materials. The one you have on the left is a sort of adaptation of the Convention of the Rights of the Child to be used in settings where children are admitted. And the one you have on the right is also some material that we developed specially to approach uh, pregnancy uh, for women from different contexts, for women with disabilities, for women who are engaged for couples of the same sex, for, uh, for heter heterosexual uh, couples, for people coming from indigenous communities. So all these issues really dealing with diversities are bring as a matter to understand the importance to, uh, to, to, do, to recognize the, the, the value of difference and also the importance to understand this, the meaning of otherness. We also develop training activity, both for providers, but also working with the community or people who participate in, in the health settings uh, related with disabilities, related with uh, uh, empowering, uh, relating with uh, intercultural aspects and prenatal health. And I, we, uh, just a, as, a, as an example of the kind of activities that uh, we develop, considering that all these activities that we develop at each uh, institution, mostly hospitals, they're the result of a negotiation. First, the expression of interest of the authorities to be part of this process. To understand that this is a process, I would take time because as you know, cultural change and institutional change is time dependent and takes a long time to, to put this in practice. And in this sense, we invite to integrate the different paradigms re regarding their professional development. And this uh, graph, is part of the report that we published uh, last year on repositioning child in the SDGs. So this graph will try to integrate is uh, different paradigms or lenses associated with health. For instance, the life course aspects that were mentioned uh, in the DS conference at the very beginning of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, event trying to understand also the intergenerational facts that affect people's health, well-being, and also the intergenerational reproduction of inequities, social exclusion, and poverty. Also, the existing gaps that happen, including before birth, and how they reproduce in the societies. And we know that if there is an inequity, we cannot reach inequity in unequal societies. I'm talking about Latin America is that this is the most uneven region in the planet. We have to understand protective and risk factors. So to bring uh, health promotion also to our understanding and also to recognize diversity. That is something that also is highlighted in the, this graph, recognizing that this diversity is the results of many facts, issues and determinants. All this under the umbrella of the child rights. So uh, we know that rights start to be recognized and accepted from the very beginning of life. I'm talking about from birth. We are people, we are person from birth till the time we pass away. So we have to recognize that rights are important along the life course, independently if you are a child, if you are an old person, if you are black, or you are white, independently you have a disability or not, we are all equal. And this is something 
from the rights perspective, but there are some differences that should be rescued in terms of understand diversity. And to finalize, we also develop some other activities and more responses beyond the aesthetics. We talk about bridges, the importance of building bridges. And this was a project that we developed in terms of promoting sexual education and HIV prevention for adolescents with disabilities. People with disabilities, they have their own sexuality. Some people think that they have, they have no sexuality, but as you might understand, sexuality is important for health. So, so this is just to let you know how do we bring diversity into ground programs or projects, in this case, beyond health settings, how to bring inclusion, early inclusion in children with disabilities, and this is something that we develop uh, for the Uruguayan government. This is another uh, project that we work also with David that was here yesterday in terms of recognizing the importance of enabling, enabling environments and participatory learning, recognizing the importance of diversity. And other tools that we also developed in terms of recognizing the importance of gender diversity in health settings. On the left, you have the gender tool. That is something we developed many years ago uh, with people from Valencia, with Concha Colomera, a colleague that she's not still with us, but she is still in our minds. That is a way to introduce gender diversity into child and adolescent uh, programs, considering that uh, gender inequities, they start at early stages of life. Gender is not an issue, issue of women and not an issue of uh, grown up people. So we have to recognize them, the dimension of gender diversity from early stages of life. And then you have, the one you have in the needle is a book on how to bring gender perspective into health settings. And the, the last one is a, is a publication on women's health with a life course approach. But also what we need is to promote an inclusive research agenda, trying to bring the importance of diversity into the way we build knowledge and the way to, we understand the situation and the particular uh, feelings and sensitivities in people that sometimes are marginalized because some reason, because they are different. So to finalize, being different is not a problem. The problem is being treated differently. So that's the reason why we do understand that it's important to bring the, 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 the issue of diversity as a matter for discussion, for debate and for understanding. Thank you so much.